that was some simple basic cuts that you do with a circular saw. Now we're going to cover some cuts that you would do more specialized cuts. We're going to start with a bevel cut and this requires some adjustments to the saw. Before we do any adjustments to the saw, we're always going to unplug it. We never want to make any changes or modifications to the saw with electricity to it. So we're looking for the lever that's going to loosen the base plate. Like the blade depth adjustment, this saw has one other lever that's going to allow the base plate to now tilt from side to side. So in this, the, the configuration of the setting that it's in right now, you can see that the base plate is perfectly flat and the blade is perfectly vertical. So we have a perpendicular condition of the blade to the base plate. We're going to change that for a bevel. So I'm going to find the bevel adjustment lever here. I'm going to loosen it and that's going to allow me to tilt the base from side to side. And there is a gauge on the front that has numbers on it that are going to correspond to degrees like a miter saw. And we're going to, I'll set this saw at uh, 45 degrees. And you can't see this back here, but I have a tiny uh, mark and an arrow. And once I get it to where I, I like it, I'm going to go ahead and lock it in place. Now that saw is set. Now if we, if we turn the base plate flat, look at the orientation of the blade to the base plate. We now have a 45 degree orientation of that base plate to that blade and the blade to the base plate. So now when I run this saw cut, it's going to increase the the width of cut in the material. A bevel cut is a lot more difficult for the saw to make. You will find the saw will work a lot harder in bevel cuts than it does in a straight or squared cut. So once we've made our bevel adjustment to 45 degrees, we can still watch our guide notch in the front of the saw. It's just that we're going to watch a different one. So there is a guide notch on this saw. As you can see in this presentation, it's pointed out with the dotted arrow that is going to be the shifted guide notch for the 45 degree bevel setting. What has happened in the process of tilting this base or tilting this saw to the left is that now it has moved the location of where that blade needs to be aligned. So if we're using the 45 degree notch setting, it only works at 45 degrees, but it's shifting it over. So as you can see here, we were watching my zero degrees for the squared cuts. Now we're watching our 45 degree notch line here. We're also, just like with the other cuts, we're watching the leading edge of our blade where it's channeling into the material. So if we watch those two notches, even with a 45 degree bevel cut, we can continue in a straight line. It's even more imperative that we run that straight line because this saw, as you can see, is going to carry through a lot more material in this angle. So we've gone through the setup and the follow through or the process of it. We can go out in the shop now and do some bevel cuts. Here we are out in our shop. We're going to do a bevel cut. Remember our squared cut. Our bevel cut is going to work a lot of the same way. It's just going to have some different adjustments and setup. We're going to use a line on this board, this two by six board. I'm going to mark an inch. We're going to knock an inch off at a bevel. I'm going to use a 45 degree bevel. So we need to set our saw. Remember, we will not have the saw plugged in when we're making any adjustments. Now we can adjust the bevel. If you remember, the bevel adjustment was on the front. We're going to loosen that lever. Now the base plate is going to move. I've got a gauge on here and I'm going to set it aligned with our 45 degree mark. And that's going to get tightened up. Whenever we're doing bevels, our blade depth is generally going to have to be set at the maximum depth. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen my blade depth leather, lever and I'm going to drop it to our maximum depth. Keep in mind a bevel cut is going to use all of the depth of your blade. This cut is hard on the saw. You're going to see the saw work much harder in this cut. So what I have to do is to push it or listen for that motor and push it a lot slower than I would a straight or squared cut. So let's plug this saw in and go ahead and do it. Same deal, we're going to line up the zero line and now we're using, I'm sorry, let me back up. We're not using the zero line. Now that we've set it at a 45 degree bevel, 
our guide notch has shifted to our 45 degree mark here and we're going to watch the leading edge of the blade fingers off the trigger until we need to make the cut i'm going to line that cut up or the, line the mark up with the blade as best i can and the guide notch i'll back it off just a little bit get this off to speed and i'll follow through So don't forget, do not ignore the saw until the, it comes to a stop, the blade comes to a stop. As you can see, that cut was a lot harder on the saw than a typical squared cut. The, it's a lot harder to steer it and control it and sight it as well. So I would consider a bevel cut advanced and requires a lot more focus and concern and safety control over this saw. Here we are out in the shop. Let's make a bevel cut with our worm gear saw. It's going to be very similar to our direct drive saw. As you can see, I've set up my heavy side of the saw is on the right, so I've set up on the other side of the board. And we're going to go ahead and make our adjustment on our bevel. First, I have to unplug the saw. Remember, the lever is on the front for the bevel setting. We can loosen that. Now the base plate is going to move. I'm going to set it at my 45 degree setting. I'm going to tighten it up. And now we need to set our, our depth gauge on this blade like we did our direct drive. Set it to the maximum depth. This is a deep cut. It's going to cut through more material. So I'll go ahead and loosen that lever and drop this blade down as far as it will go. That's our maximum depth. That should work for our cut. This saw is going to lean the other direction of the other drive. We need to mark a line to cut. I'll take an inch off this board. Now we can make our cut. So this becomes a little bit of a trick with a worm gear saw because we're watching our 45 degree mark. Now instead of watching from the left, I have to watch through the saw from the top. So I'm going to be looking a little bit more from the right. I'm watching this blade and that mark at the same time. I'll back this saw off, pull the trigger, and then follow through. As you could hear, that saw is working a lot harder than it would on a squared cut. And the challenge is watching this saw from the top following through. It's a very heavy saw. That's a bevel cut with a worm gear saw. Another type of cut that you will have to do on the job site is going to be a plunge cut. This is the typical kind of cut you're going to make in the center of a panel or a piece of a sheet good. You might cut a square, you might cut a rectangle, but it's generally four-sided. You're going to do it with this saw and you're going to drop this saw into the material. This can be a dangerous process, so we need to go through it. I'm gonna go through the three steps here. We're gonna mock it up, and then we'll go do it in the lab. I've mocked this up here uh, so that we can kind of demonstrate it without the saw running. So we talked about this saw and the front uh, edge of the base plate. That needs to be tight to the material. And I'm going to use my front hand here on this handle as my uh, my pressure on that front edge. Now we're going to use it like a hinge. I don't want that front edge moving at all. I only want the tilt. So I'm going to tilt it back and as I lower that saw in, I don't want to move the blade from side to side. That's going to cause that binding that we are so concerned about. The other thing that I need to do is I need to pull the blade guard out of the way to expose the blade. So the hand that is holding this front handle is going to also have to hold the blade guard out of the way. I don't have a problem with that. Different saws are different and you need some reach for that. But what you want to do is to make sure that you hold this blade guard back, but you're not sticking your finger into the blade while you're doing it. So you're going to hold this blade guard back. It's exposing the blade. I'm holding the front edge tight to the surface with my front hand. Now I'm going to lower that blade into the material slowly as a, well i'll start the saw first get it up to speed then i'm going to drop it or plunge it into the material until it is flat to the surface i then can let go of my blade guard now i can continue with a cut as long as i need to 
in the normal traditional way of watching the guide notch and the blade, uh, the leading edge of the blade, until I get to the point where I want to stop. At that point, you can then lift the saw out of the cut. You might change directions and do another plunge cut. Generally, it's going to be a four-sided cut. That's how you do a plunge cut. So now that we've gone through the steps and some of the hazards and concerns, let's go out in the shop and do some plunge cuts. Here we are back in the shop. We're going to do one of the more challenging cuts with a circular saw. This one's called a plunge cut. Remember, we had three steps for the plunge cut. That's going to be that the front edge has to be held down tight to the surface. We're going to then move the saw like a hinge. And as we lift the saw up, we're going to pull back on this blade guard. We need to get it out of the way and it will not move automatically. So we have to do that manually. We're then going to lower the saw into the material until the base goes flat to the surface. We can then treat it like a regular panel cut and push that saw forward until we get to the end of the cut we want to make. So let's go ahead and do that. First things first is we need to check our blade depth. As you can see here, we're, this is half inch material. I'm a, a lot, uh, I'm about, I'm at a medium setting, let's call this. You want it, you can't use the quarter inch rule for plunge cuts. You need that saw to be deeper so that you can thoroughly make that cut at whatever pivot you're at at the moment. So we're going to set it at the medium setting. I'm going to line this saw up. The trick of this is finding, you want that saw when you plunge it, you want to be able to ideally hit the back of your mark that you're trying to make. So my cut goes from here to here. And I need to, when I drop the saw and it's sitting on the surface, it should line up with this mark. Let's see how well I do. So here I am lined up. My zero mark is on the line and I'm going to line my blade up. I'm going to hold this blade guard back and I'm going to hold this handle so that I can work the front edge of the saw as a pivot. I'm going to lift the saw up off the surface and then pull the trigger. We're going to wait for the saw to settle down at full speed and I'm going to plunge the cut. So let's go ahead and do it. So at this point, I can continue forward with the cut. You wouldn't stop in this instance, but I wanted to talk you through it. So now at this point, it becomes a typical panel cut. So there you have it. There is a cut in the center of a board and we'll call that a plunge cut. Let's do one more cut like that. This I'm going to, I won't talk this one. We'll, we'll go straight through it. So typically the reason you need to make a plunge cut is you're going to cut a square out of the center of a panel. So as you can see here, this might be for duct work in a floor. It could be a number of different situations where you don't have an edge to start from. So as you see here, I'd marked out a square. I've made my two side cuts. To make the other two side cuts, I would turn this way and then repeat those plunge cuts here and here. And now I've got a cutout in the center of a panel. Now that we've gone through our cuts, let's get into some maintenance procedure for our circular saw. Part of circular saw usage is understanding the condition of the blade. So if you're making cuts, if you have issues with the motor slowing down while you're in a cut, it could be that the blade is dull. If you have some wobble or vibration while making cuts, this could have to do with an issue with the blade as well. If the blade is starting to burn or your materials are showing burn marks, this could also be a poor condition or dulling of the blade. If any of the teeth on the blade are missing, this should be a check before you use it. But missing teeth will make this blade uh, give a very poor cut. And if you ever see smoke when you're cutting, this is a true sign that this blade is ready to be changed. The third video in the series for circular saws will go over all the steps to change blades on both of these saws. Another feature and the last feature to talk about on a uh, only a worm gear saw is the rafter hook or the sky hook. This is a convenient feature 
that sits on the uh, the back, well, I would call it the back side of the saw. It's, uh, it's made to hook on a piece of lumber. So if you're in a high spot, this is a heavy tool, if you need to put the tool down, you will not have anywhere to rest it. So you would find a board, typical two by lumber, and it will hook on that. It, of course, the board needs to be supported in a solid uh, connection, and it will hold that tool for you temporarily so you can do what you need to do and then get back to it. I like to talk about storing and, and handling the saw when I'm talking about the sky hook. I would offer you a, a location to lay this saw down as well or a method to lay it down. So we have the sides of the saw. This is the left side, this is the right side. I always tell people to lay it down on this side. The saw is gonna want to or tend to want to lay on that side anyway. What you don't wanna do is to lay the saw on this side because there's a lot of parts on this side that are fragile and when they're bent it will make the tool not work properly anymore so if you're ever laying the tool down don't drop it lay it down you don't want to damage or bend anything including the base plate and this is a much safer position for that saw let's do a review of the circular saw safety check this tool it is only in your best interest and for your own safety and others that everything is working on it. All of the parts and all of the adjustments, everything's tensioned down. It is set right before you start using it. The worst thing to do is to be in the middle of a cut and, and have to make these adjustments or stop. Set the blade depth to a quarter inch beyond the material. This allows for a complete cut and you don't have to follow up with another cut after your first cut. Follow through the material. You need to go further than it looks like you need to, to complete the cut. You have to commit to it and push that saw beyond that point. Sight the guide notch and the blade edge. If you watch both of those points, not at the same time, but if you go back and forth watching those points, your cut can only stay on that straight line. Use both hands on the tool. This tool, especially the worm gear, very powerful. And the front hand is there for protection of you. The back hand's there to steer the saw. So that's where your control comes from. Maintain full contact of the base plate to the material. This is key to making sure that that cut is true and accurate and to prevent binding. Follow the three steps of plunge cutting and use two hands. That's gonna be step one putting the front edge of the base blade down, working it as a hinge, pulling back the blade guard to expose the blade, and then dropping that saw into the material slowly and under control. Here's a list of terms used in this presentation. And if you want a closer look at them, hit pause, check them out. Knowledge is power and it only makes us build better. I hope you've learned something about this very important power tool we call the circular saw. It's imperative, this is one of those tools that we must master if we want to build. And all of the, the information that you've learned today should help you get there with also experience. So thanks for watching. That's a wrap. This video is a production of Trade Skills U, all rights reserved. If you provide instruction in the construction trades and have a need for videos like these, please contact us at tradeskillsu.com.